Amen. We really thank God for this evening. I want to thank, welcome you all into this meeting. Amen. As we are about to learn a lot. My name is Kevin Ngoge. I'll be leading. Invite your friends as we are about to begin. I want to welcome Mike, who is going to take us through the activity. We are going to study a lot. We have a lot ahead of us. We began this journey last Saturday, and today we are going to continue with the journey, studying about how to become God's master. And I want to welcome you all. Stay abroad. Welcome, Mike. Yeah, we can get you clearly. Yes. I can. Uh, what about you? Okay, thank you. So uh, before we start our presentation for the day, uh, okay, let's let's pray. But we are I'll explain something then we start so we can start the recording. Of And as we uh, head to another session to learn from thy word, I pray that you may guide us. I pray this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so from the last meeting that we had, uh, there were some inconveniences and uh, quite a number of us were not able to attend. And uh, it was a fault on our side. So, so that most of us don't miss this opportunity of learning much, uh, about music from God's word. Uh, okay. so, yeah, so that we don't miss that opportunity, uh, I'm going to do a recap of what we did last time. And then as we do a recap, now this is more of a complete study. We'll cover what we covered last time and then add the things that we did not cover. So if you missed the last session, don't worry. I'm going to repeat what I said, but with it, I'm going to add uh, it's like the full presentation, the full content of what we are to cover in the what we are to cover in the last meeting. Yeah. So with that explanation, I hope those who are there, you won't get bored. Uh, we are going to add more to what we already covered, and those who are not uh, available in the last meeting, you'll also benefit from what we'll get in this meeting. Yeah. So as we start, have your Bible close, have your pen, your book the spirit of prophecy books and yeah let's uh, begin together so now i'll start my presentation right now but before that uh, i'll pray and i'll pray in uh, okay i'll use this my prayer will be in form of a song song sda hymnal song number 570 probably nash you can help in presenting the lyrics of the song SDA hymnal song number 570 so i'm going to do the first the the first the third and the fourth stanza yeah all right and as I sing, please meditate on the words and also pray for me as I will be presenting the message. We can, we can start from the first stanza. Thank you. Not I, but Christ, be honored, love exalted. Not I, but Christ, 
be seen, be known, be heard. Not I, but Christ in every look and action. Not I, but Christ in every thought and word. Stanza three. Christ only Christ, no idol words are falling. Christ only Christ, no needless bustling sound. Christ only Christ, no self-important bearing. Christ only Christ. No trace of I be found. But not I, but Christ, my every need supply. Not I, but Christ, my strength and health shall be. Not I, but Christ, for body, soul, and spirit. Christ only, Christ, being and eternally. I'll we'll redo the first answer. Not I, but Christ. Be honored, loved, exalted. Not I, but Christ. Be seen, be known, be heard. Not I, but Christ, in every look and action. Not I, but Christ, in every thought and word. Savior, Savior. In my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Okay, thank you. So let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, we come before you this time. As we are about to learn from thy word, I pray for your guidance, for the Holy Spirit to fill my heart, that what I'll speak, not I, but Christ be exalted. May no idle word come from my mouth. May every word and action be from thee, O Lord. Heavenly Master, there are also those who are yearning to listen to what you have for them this day. I pray that you may fill them with the Holy Spirit, that they may understand thy teaching and endeavor to abide by it. I pray this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so welcome to today's session. And uh, the title, as you had seen, is Becoming God's Maestro. Becoming God's Maestro. And our key text is James chapter 1, verse 4, which I believe by the end of the session we'll have understood where the key text comes, how, how the key text is related to the topic. So becoming God's maestro. Let's first define who is a maestro. And I'll use the illustration of the field. A maestro is somebody who has great expertise in whatever, in, okay, it's a term used in music. But let me relate it to other fields first of all. Let me talk about uh, the field of education. When you start your education, you start from kindergarten, then you go to uh, primary, then high school, campus, then you can do your master's and PhD. You can write papers and all that other stuff that they do, you become a senior lecturer, and finally you get to the level of a professor. But still, a professor is not the highest level in education. We have guys whose works are quoted. In the field of computer, we have people like Charles Babbage, I believe. In the field of uh, science and engineering, we have names like Albert Einstein. We have names like uh, Isaac Newton. So uh, you can't call, I think you can't call Isaac Newton a professor. He's 
way above that. He's he has uh, it's a big name in that field. So what is it to become? What is it? What uh, in in uh, modern times they say goat greatest of all time. So a maestro is one who is at the highest level. So in music, that is who a maestro is. Now let's consider the topic again, becoming God's maestro. We want to be a maestro by not the standards of the world, but God, God's maestro. For us to become God's maestro, we have to be esteemed and high to those extents in the eyes of God and not in our own eyes or in the eyes of fellow man. So uh, that's the meaning of the topic that we have today, becoming God's maestro. Now, what are some of the characteristics of maestro? These are people who have great knowledge in the field of music. These are people who have their own written works. They don't play other people's pieces. Yes, they may play, but even when they play, they may customize it and come up with something extremely, extremely, what, could, what can I call it? Extremely musical or genius. So that, this is who a maestro is like. Another example is another one of the maestros that we can say existed and probably believed to be one of the greatest was uh, named by Mozart. So they say he had also a perfect ear. He could listen to very complicated music and reproduce it on the piano, on was it piano or forgetting the name of this instrument. Okay, I've forgotten the name. Let me see you again. Or Hapsi, yeah, Hapsi. So uh, he had a great uh, knowledge and expand expands knowledge on piano, and he will, we can term him as one of the maestros. Maybe let me use this ex maybe football. I don't know why the name of Messi and Ronaldo always stands out above all other names. Yet they are great. Uh, they are great footballers. I'm not uh, so much into football. So. I'm just using this to illustrate that a maestro goes above, uh, above, let's say, genius. So becoming God's maestro. Maestro is a term mostly used in music. Now, I'm going to use this analogy of a building. A building. Uh, based on the term maestro, if it were to be a building, then you will expect this to be the highest building, the most magnificent, uh, standing out above all other buildings. So I'll relate maestro and a building. You want to put up this building that will tower above all other buildings. Probably you, you want it to be the highest or the one built with the most precious commodity, maybe gold. If you put up a building of purely gold, then uh, it will stand out. When the sun shines, I believe it will reflect its rays outside. So we are going to use this analogy of a building to learn of how to become God's maestro. Now, before you put up a building, you need to identify, you need to ask yourself the question, why? Why am I putting up this building? People may put it for, up for different reasons. One, for pride. Of course, you want your building to be the highest in the world. And... Uh, your main objective will be to have the highest building in the world. All the other things come secondary. Uh, you may not, uh, you may use even the cheapest material, but your main objective is to have the highest building in the world. Uh, you may do it for pride. You may also do it to for to accommodate. Let's say you have, um, let me use MPs as an example. Two hundred and ninety MPs working remotely, and you want them all to come to a central place. So you may want a building that can fit all of them. And having 290 MPs, of course, they have also their staff there. It will need a big building. So your main aim, why are you putting up the building? It is to accommodate many people. So you forget about all other things. And the main objective is to accommodate uh, all other people. So we first have to identify why. Why put up this building? Why? Why do we want to put up this building? What is the need of having, asking ourselves this question? Because it helps us focus on what we want to achieve. Now, the second thing is to have a plan. Have a plan. When you want to become God's maestro, 
you are need to ask yourself why why do i want to be an expert in this field the second thing uh, you need to have a plan now what is involved about a plan planning involves everything everything i was impressed by the lesson of today uh, of this week which say uh, and one of the content was like was about planning and we normally say that failing to plan is planning to fail if you just start without a plan then uh okay you may be challenged or at the end you may not focus and you may not achieve your goal so have a plan now who makes the plan in buildings is it the person of the building i really doubt i believe they get architects and all other stuff but we'll develop that concept as we proceed so you need to have a plan and uh let me let me give this example I, I, we've said that the plan uh you don't make the plan alone look let's look at adam and eve uh, okay let's look at our own illustration as human beings who brought you into the world uh most of this meme i saw long ago that you find yourself in the world and then you're told your future depends on you and you didn't consult anyone to bring you into the world but if we have a Christian view of it, there's somebody, somebody who brought us into this world, and that was God. And so he knows the purpose that he brought us to this world. And for us to develop, and then we have to trust in God who brought us to this, to this world. So ask yourself the question why? Number two, have a plan. How do you develop this plan? Uh, we'll talk about it in a bit later. The third thing is location. A plan now includes everything from the foundation to the top of the building. Uh, but the first thing is the location. Where are you putting up your building? Remember, we are not talking about a building. We are talking about becoming God's maestro, but we are using that as an analogy. Where do you want to put up your building? Uh, in the book of Matthew, the story is uh, brought of a wise man and a foolish man. And I believe we know this song. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. And the house of the man stood firm. And then the foolish man built his house on sand. So where do you want to build you, your house, your building, location? and i'll summarize the location as two parts you either build it on the rock or you build it on sand you either build it on the rock or you build it you build it on sand of course the rock who is the rock jesus christ if you build your house on the rock you build it on jesus christ, on jesus christ but if you build it on the sand any other thing other than jesus christ is the sand and we know what happened of course, the house stood, but when rains came and floods and uh, the winds blew, the house of the man was taken away. So we have developed three concepts in the building analogy that we are applying in becoming God's maestro. Number one, you need to ask yourself the question, why? Number two, you need to plan. Number three, identify the location. Are you putting your uh, building on, uh, on the rock or on sand? So today I'll not be talking about sun because our topic is becoming God's maestro, not just any maestro. And then after you have all that now in place, uh, you lay the foundation. Lay the foundation. Now when you look at a building, it has made very many parts from the roof down to the foundation. But the most important part in a building that will determine whether this structure will stand or not. Number one is the location. Of, of course, is the location. No matter how strong a building you put up, if you put it on sand, then uh, it will still fall down. So location is important. But then even in the location, you need a foundation. If let's say this is your building, this is the location you want to put up your building and you just put it on top, obviously it can work. So it needs to be deep in the like we're talking about the rock deep in the rock for it to stand yeah so 
you need a strong foundation you need a strong foundation for you to put up a building the height of your building or the strength of it will depend on the foundation so it is important to have a good foundation now in music what i'll term as the foundation is what we call technique technique a question what is technique technique is learning how your body operates and using it to get the results that you intend i'll repeat technique is learning how your body operates and using it to achieve the results that you want to get i repeat the last time technique is learning how your body operates and using it to achieve the results that you want now i'll use various uh, illustrations to explain the concept of technique uh the first illustration i'll use is the bus illustration bus you're given an assignment uh this bus should come from nairobi to mombasa it should be transported from nairobi to mombasa and the bus is given to you there now one person breaks uh the concepts that we have why the concept of why the concept of plan and location okay let me explain it this way when you're given that task and i'll use two people one on my right one on my left take this bus from nairobi to mombasa person one the first person does this uh he looks for uh 50 strong gentlemen who have eaten well and are well built and tells them, I want you to carry this bus from Nairobi to Mombasa. How long do you think they will take? Is it, obviously it's a very, very long time and it will be very tedious. But then we have this second person who decides, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to a driving school, uh, following the procedures that we have placed, we have put, you ask yourself why, and then you make a plan. And in the plan, you consult those who have done that before. And uh, you go to a driving school, you learn how to drive, and uh, eventually, to achieve this task, you drive the bus from Nairobi to Mombasa. Between these two groups, the first group of 50 men who carried the bus, and the second group the second part who the second person who goes to a driving school and learns how to learn okay in three weeks in three weeks uh who will have moved who will have achieved part of the objective a question to us in three weeks who will have achieved part of the objective anybody can just answer the first person the first person the one, three of weeks, the one of 50 of 50 strong people right it means you'll be the first to achieve this part of the objective now the person who will take the longer time is this one who went to a driving school okay but eventually who will arrive first the second, to ask the second one will arrive first right so this is the issue about all these steps that we are taking there is one way that we may take and we look like this person who is using 50 people to carry the bus from nairobi to mombasa and uh, we have people who will follow this trend and then we have the second category who will uh, learn the easiest way of doing this thing and use it so that is it about technique technique you don't focus so much on the task but you lay a strong foundation that will enable you to do the task uh, uh, faster or in a more efficient way i'll use the second illustration of a pencil when you are learn young we learned uh, how to write but uh, which one comes first is it writing letter a or learning how to hold a pen question which one comes first is it learning letter uh, is it writing letter a or learning how to hold a pen
anybody. See, I think by the end, I'll read that uh, opportunities are given and success depends on uh, the use of these opportunities. So uh, maybe you have the competence of answering this question, but you want another, you are just uh, viewing and waiting for another person to answer. And he who is faithful in little will be faithful also in much. We'll uh, look at that concept a bit later. So I'm asking this question, which one comes first? Is it writing letter A or learning how to hold a pen? It's learning how to hold the pen. Yeah, learning how to hold the pen comes first. So how do you learn how to hold a pen? Uh, that is more to do with technique. You learn how your body operates, you have your fingers, you learn how to fold your fingers, how to place your pen uh, at the appropriate place in the, in the fingers. And then secondly, you write what you want to write. But the path that most of us normally take in music is uh, you want to sing in the choir. The first thing you do is you join and you start singing. But the right procedure will be, first of all, learn how your voice operates and use that you, you learn how your voice operates. You learn how to sing. Then after learning how to sing, that is when you start singing. You start learn how to hold the pen, then you write. Uh, most of us, the way that we sing is the way we found ourselves singing. You just joined and uh, you open your mouth and you start singing or maybe if it's playing an instrument you just take the instrument you look at how other people do it and you start but uh, a very important concept is learn first of all how technique deals with how learn how the whole body operates and then after you've learned how it operates now start the task sing go to a driving school first then do the task now uh I'll use this last illustration. Uh, I was, I, was pre I am privileged, I'm not sure where to place it, but uh, sorry about that. Uh, there's a place that I've worked and our role was, one of our roles was Kuchimba Shimo Ya Kweka Polyastima. Kuchimba Shimo Ya Kweka Polyastima. And, uh, you see, it was after I'd learned something to do with uh, music. And I realized that the task ya kuchimba shimo, uh, I think anybody can do it. When you go there, you just start, unanza tu bila, you just start doing that work without, uh, how uh, you consider a, uh, without learning, okay, I'm looking for the right words to put this. If you're told to dig a hole, you'll just take the tools and start digging it. But uh, when you, the most important thing is to learn first of all, how. You look at those who have done it for years and you look how they do it. And when you see how they do it, then you copy them. And uh, because they have done it for years, they have the technique and experience of how to achieve the results very easily. Now I'll give this uh, illustration and explain it. It will help us understand more on the point of becoming God's maestro. Now, this is what I used to see. Those guys who had, who had done the job for many years, uh, to chimba na kroba. I think ni kroba, that kilong kichuma. So wanashika and looking at them, it's like they were not using any energy. Lakini shimo inasonga. Then there was us who are still new to this thing. And I noticed one time that one of the people we were working with had an injury. And I felt that the injury was at a very awkward place. Because uh, you wonder how somebody gets an injury at a place like this. Uh, it's, to me, it seems awkward. And I, I, wasn't, I wasn't understanding how. But then I realized, the moment I'm going to chini, it slides, the hand slides on it, and then back, the hand slides on the back. So constantly, constantly, this part, you get an injury at a place like this. But those who had done the work for uh, quite some time, 
wanashikilia tu hivyo and uh, down up down up without the hands causing some freak without the tool causing some friction on the hands so what was more important uh, it was learning how they do it and then using that same way to achieve the results now i repeat the definition of technique learning how your body works and using that to obtain the results that you intend so we are still in our building the first question you ask yourself you yourself is why put up this building why do you want to become god's maestro then have a plan for the building also have a plan for uh, the steps that you will follow in your journey in music then determine the location is it rock or is it sand of course rock is jesus christ and sand is all other stuff and then lay the foundation the foundation is i can say it's a very fundamental part the foundation is normally hidden nobody sees the foundation of a building but it is seen when the building is up if you see a 21 floor building you know that that building has a very strong foundation but it is hidden when they are laying the foundation they consider nothing to do with, they, there's nothing to do with beauty uh what is considered is the strength of this foundation beauty akuna beauty ataki dog ni strength peke yake when laying the foundation and then every detail has to be taken into account because if you mess up with the foundation you've messed up with the whole building uh so in music i can say the foundation is technique have the proper technique in voice learn how your body operates before you sing even the simplest song joy to the world the lord is come learn how your voice works uh how to how the neck muscles should be how the abdomen should be the right posture how you should breathe and this is the illustration i used uh, last time about uh, a song that i tried to sing in campus i had nilikoni mesikia for a very very long time until it was in my i knew how each and every note was moving in the song but then when i tried singing it i was unable to do so only to realize later that my problem was technique and not uh, something to do with the song now what if you have the wrong breathing technique uh, i'm just giving an example in uh, mm -hmm. what if you have the wrong breathing technique in hymns you can get away with that but when you go to more advanced music let me give an example of sorry about that classicals classicals are somehow complicated uh, i'll give this example of one who used to sing let all the angels of god worship him and then the second let all the angels of god what if you have the wrong breathing part let all the and unajua ukiaribu katikati awanzi maliuliaribu you follow where the others had reached sindio but if let's say you have the wrong technique and you're breathing uh, in the wrong manner sorry for that and you're breathing in the wrong manner remember the instrumental that you're using will not wait for you at umiari una pumua hip part and also those notes are very fast so instead of so having something like or let me use this other example uh Halted. instead let's say you breathe at the wrong place instead of something something like uh exo it is on oh 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 you spoil the rhythm so learning the right technique is important not you spoil the rhythm but you even change the song learning the right technique is important before you head to singing the song have the right technique in instrument learn how your fingers op operate Okay, so the rest I told them. Uh, 
which is the point of rotation of your hand? Which is the point of rotation of your hand? Which finger does your useful in answering? You have your hand. Uh, on which finger does the hand rotate? It rotates around which finger? I guess middle. Middle, this one. Uh, the one after the index finger. This one. Yeah. Okay. No, index finger, then the number two. Oh, number this two one. Index finger, that one, yeah. Okay. Here, yeah. any other answer? Okay. 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 That is uh, naturally because you have five fingers, the set of rotation will always we may we can assume it to be this one, right? But now, technique is learning how your hands, before you play the keyboard or the guitar, you learn how your hand operates and you use it to achieve the results that you want, okay? So, I'm going to rotate my hand and you tell me around which finger it is rotating, okay? Uh -huh. Which one remains constant as the others move? Okay, let me place my hand this way. Which there is a finger that that's remaining at the center as the rest of the hand rotates. Which finger is it? Maybe Victor, you can try now again. The index finger. Yeah, the index finger. So these are some of the common mistakes also we make with the voice we don't understand how our body operates so we use a lot of uh we use unnecessary uh unnecessary effort when the work would have been simple now if i'm playing my keyboard and i know that my hand is rotating around this finger then i can apply that concept uh i don't know whether you can you illustrate that Okay, let me try to see if I can illustrate that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, it's quite hard. So, uh, let me say I want to play something like. Now look at this finger. I know my hand. My thing. My hand is rotating around this. So, I can easily. What if I didn't know that? Probably I'll lose some. I'm using a lot of. My hand is like jumping. But if I know that, uh, it's quite easy. But okay, I'll play. I'll probably have broken some rules there. But uh, I was just trying to explain the concept that what's more important is learning the technique. Okay, I, have no, I don't have my recorder close by. But in recorder, also learn how your hands operate and how your breath operates so some people may hold the recorder the recorder commonly people call it a flute this way but then you will be using a lot of a lot of energy to change uh in between the notes what if you had the proper technique uh you'll just use some small amount of energy uh also Another problem with technique is normally tension. You have your hands so strongly held, which is uh, very unnecessary. You need to be relaxed as you do your thing. So the most one of the most important things and the foundation is technique. Before you start singing, learn how to sing. Of course, to learn how to sing, you have to sing. You have to do the exercises and all that stuff. But your main aim is learning how it is done before mm, before doing it uh okay we'll discuss the effects of breaking rules on technique uh towards the end but if i forget kindly remind me 
Now we are still in our building. We have why the plan. Okay, L uh, let me see. We are concentrating. What was the first point? Which is the first question you ask yourself? Why? Why? Okay, number two, a different person. Planning. Yeah, you plan. Okay, number three, a different person. Number three. All right, she'll request the host to remove all of our, all of you and we remain with the two. What was point three? Okay, Victor and Miranda, you can or you can chip in point three. You can re, uh, the foundation. Uh, foundation. Okay, before foundation, there was something. Location. Yeah, location. So the first point was ask yourself why you're putting up this building. Why do you want to become God's maestro? Number two, have a plan. And we said the plan. Uh, okay, we'll talk about that. Number three, location. You either build your house on the rock or on sand. And then foundation. And then there were other things, the building itself, the finishings, the complete structure. And then once your building is done, of course, you'll do some renovation. But allow me not to discuss all other things, but edit at foundation. So that because uh, you can't move to the next step before you're done with the foundation. So for today's presentation, I'll cut it at the foundation. Of course, you have to get to the renovation and uh, blah, 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 all that stuff. Yeah. Now, for that, we were looking at uh, the, 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 the steps or the method or the procedure of having a... That is basically what we covered in our last session. Now, the next part, uh, the next part is how to achieve these things, how to achieve these things. Of course, you have spoken about all of them, but how do we achieve all this? How? And I can maybe say, using the illustrations you have used, how to achieve much in less time. How to achieve much in less time. Of course, you want to be God's maestro, but you don't want to. Uh, you don't want to take forever. Uh, if you can do something in two years, why should you do it in seven years? So the process of how, and I'm going to give uh, my personal testimony in the field of music and also in piano. I've played the uh, the keyboard for a uh, few years, uh, few. Okay, I started in 2017 or 16. 2016, around December. So that's how many years? 16, 17, no, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23. That is approximately seven years. And in my seventh year, I realized how much I would have been, how far much ahead I would have been if only I used the right procedure. Then I did not use that procedure because I never knew about it. And as a result, right now I'm doing things that I would have done at the very beginning of my career in piano. So most of us may follow this same path that I followed since I did not have uh, guidance uh, on, I did not go to a music school, so I didn't know all that. I was just learning from YouTube and all that stuff. And I learned a lot, but with time, you get to that level where uh, you know you have much to do, but you don't know how. You don't know how to proceed. Or you can, mm -hmm. how can I? You have something that you want to play. You have the whole idea in your mind. But when you come to playing it, uh, in a kushinda. Actually, to me, this illustration of you have some words that you want to speak, 
you want to speak fluent Kiswahili. In your mind, the Kiswahili is very fluent. But then you kifika kwa mdomo, unashangani nini mefanyika. I believe those of many of us who have problems with pronunciation, like in uh, my community, sh and s, uh, where is, is, uh, it's something that is very difficult for people. Uh, lacking the right technique will lead you to such a problem. Uh, in your mind, you're saying sugar, 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 and you know it. But when it comes to the mouth, it is sugar. In music, in your mind, there is this song, and it is, in your mind, it is there. Uh, it perfectly. But when it gets to the mouth, you are unable. So this is the importance of learning how to do things in the right way. Now, we started on why. I think that is, uh, there's no need of learning how to answer the question. It is uh, more direct. Then secondly, we went to having a plan. Having a plan. Now, we'll consider various characters in the Bible. Okay? Becoming God's maestro. So we want to study various characters in the Bible and apply what happens, what happened in their lives to our lives to see uh, what God can, to see uh, the manner that God works. Now, in the Bible, God is so concerned about how. Let's read the book of Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4. Isaiah chapter 50 verse 4, hope we are there. It says, the Lord God hath given me the tongue of, of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth, he wakeneth up morning by morning, he wakeneth my ear to hear the learned. Now, let's know this part. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know which word comes next. Somebody answer which word comes next. Okay, maybe I'm quoting the wrong thing. Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know. Okay, somebody please answer that so that I oh. can shoot you together. Mm -hmm. That I may know. I should know how. 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 Yeah, should know how. Now, is that important? Is. Or is it just a mistake that Isaiah speaks about how and not what to speak? You see, there's what to speak and how to speak it. And we, this we can relate as the words of Christ. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how. How. Technique deals with how. That I should know how. Have you ever wondered why you do a song but then another choir does the same exact song, same exact notes, same exact everything. But how they, how their presentation comes out is very different, and you wonder what is what is different in what we normally do, or choristry. Somebody choristers today, and people are singing vibrantly and actively. But then you try it with the same words they used, the same everything they used, maybe even better, but still you can't achieve that. So the Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak. What is concerned with how? Now, we ask ourselves the first question was why? How is based on technique? Now, the plan, the plan. Who gives the plan? I believe we've covered it. Somebody can answer that. Who gives the plan? Is it you who gives the plan or somebody else? Okay, we mentioned it a few minutes ago. Someone else. Someone else gives the plan. Uh -huh. Now, somebody else gives the plan. Another illustration. If you want to build an aeroplane, what do you do? Do you sit down and start thinking of how you can make something fly in the sky or you go and learn how other people had done it so that you follow the same path? Of course, both are methods, but if you start learning on your own, you'll, you may even die, and what you'll achieve will be very substandard. But then, if you learn how other people do it, you get 
the content they you understand how they built theirs then you can build yours of course with some different features uh in laying the plan get your plan from people who have done it let's say you want to be a pianist i need to ask other people's other other maestros in the field or other great pianists that i admire how did you achieve this and they will tell you i did this and this and this and then you follow that plan a problem with uh most christians as we advance in the journey of music you just start and proceed you're not interested in learning how other people did it but it is very important to seek counsel learn from other people how did you manage to do this and he tells you and you follow that path that is it about laying the plan now let us look at some of the biblical characters in the bible i'll start with uh, let's start with abraham 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 was called from haran to go to ur and then god promised him something he promised him that he will give him descendants and their number will be countless but then when abraham was in uh huh when Abraham was in, was it Ur? Yeah, when Abraham was in Ur, do you think he was being prepared for the work that he will do after, in afterlife? In, after, yani, when he was 10 years old, I believe God was preparing him by that time. He didn't know what God was preparing him for, but God had a plan for him. Okay? Uh it was not by a miracle that Abraham offered to sacrifice his own son. A temptation will not be brought to you of such magnitude if you are not faithful in these little things. So I believe what happened right from his young age, and if you read the spirit of prophecy, there were idolaters around, around him, but God did not call Abraham from idolatry. Abraham had maintained the faith even in Ur. But God had to remove him from his surrounding because they would have been a negative influence for the work that God intended to achieve with Abraham. So God lays the plan. Abraham had a son. His name was Isaac. When Isaac was going to get a wife, did he go alone? No. Abraham, Abraham organized how he would get the wife, right? Isaac had a son called Jacob. Now, uh, the story of Jacob is very interesting. How many years, uh, now this is some Bible trivia, how many years did Jacob work for Laban? How many years? Question to us. Especially if you've not spoken, but I open the floor to anybody. Yeah. How many years did, uh, uh, how many years did Jacob work for Laban? Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Uh -huh, almost there. Okay. He worked for seven years for Leah, seven years for Rachel, then six years for six years for the sheep and the flock. It was the last one was six. So uh, it was twenty years. But in those twenty years, as a shepherd, God was preparing him for a greater role. Did Jacob know? No, he did not know. But God had the plan set out. Jacob had a son called Joseph. Joseph eventually was the king. No, he was second to the king of Egypt. He was second to Pharaoh. Okay? So Joseph was prepared for many years. When he was in prison, okay, he started dreaming dreams when he was still a young boy. And that is one of the causes of the jealousy that his brothers had with him. But then later, he dreams a dream, and that dream, uh, the king dreams a dream, and that dream promotes Joseph from a prisoner to uh, the second in command. God was preparing him. God had a plan for him, but he did not know the plan. What if he didn't live according to God's will? Would he have become the second in command? He will lead. So God has a plan for us. 
and we should consult him in laying this plan for our building to become his maestro. After Joseph, let's look at Moses. Moses, uh, when you read his account, uh, I believe it's in the book of, is it Acts chapter 7, verse 22? Let me confirm. I really hope it's the one. Yeah, Acts chapter 7, verse 23. And when he was full 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. So, uh, okay, there are other texts also, but Moses, he stayed uh, in Egypt for 40 years. And then after killing the Egyptian, he went and uh, stayed with and stayed with Jethro, caring for his flock for another 40 years. And then Moses was the one who delivered the children. It was God through Moses delivered the children of Israel from Egypt. How many years are those 40 in Egypt being prepared? 40 in the wilderness, 80 years. So God prepared Moses for 80 years. He had a plan for him. And then let's look at another character and that is David. Before David became king, what was he? He was a shepherd. And in his work as a shepherd, God was preparing him for a greater role. So in our plan, let's consult other people who work with God to help us lay a plan on how we'll become maestros for God. Now, we'll use these illustrations to learn how we are to follow these steps to become God's maestro. Now, let's look at... The plan we have talked about it uh in our steps we had why the second one was having a plan the third one was location location now we are heading to location i think i've covered much to do the plan in your plan get some people who already are good in your field and follow uh, the steps location you have the rock and sand what is building your house on the rock Revelation chapter 14. Let's go to Revelation chapter 14, verse 4. Revelation 14, verse 4. These are they which were not defined. Let's, verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Now, these are the pure generation that will exist, that will be taken by God to heaven in the last days. And then verse 4, These are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb with us wherever he goeth. Now those who will inherit the kingdom of God, they have a character. And that character is perfect. That character is the character of Christ. Laying your foundation upon the rock, laying your foundation on Christ, but then it is not about only, only about what you sing, what you profess in your music. It goes beyond that. It is the character. Having their father's name written in their foreheads. What is the name? When Jacob's name was changed to Israel, something had changed in his life, his character. The names that God gives, he shall be called Christ. You shall call him Jesus. That is an instruction to the parents of Jesus. What does Jesus mean? Savior. So character is the name. The 144,000 have the character of Christ. They have the character of God. They are perfect. Now, when we come to the field of music, most people imagine just that uh, by practicing, practicing is enough. Practicing is not enough. In fact, it is like nothing if the no, it is not nothing. It is negative. It does negative work. If you practice and you sing well, and yet your character is not aligned with that of God. Now, let's give practical illustrations. Uh, you have a choir. Probably you may be uh, have the best voices and you're singing well. But then uh, you look at the dressing of the choir members. You look at how they conduct themselves their conversations and all those other stuff. Is that a house built on the rock or a house built on sand? Question. 
singing perfect character x is that a house built on rock or is that a house built on sand i think it's an easy question a house built on the sand yeah, that's a house built on the sand. So for us, you know, uh, I was privileged to be the music director in Ned and Kimathi. And one of the things that really disturbed my mind was, will we sing this well for, for probably a whole year and no soul is converted? Is it possible? Yes, it is possible for you to sing perfectly well and no soul to be converted. Because... Uh, the Matthew 6 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Good singing, I can say, is not the root, it is the fruit of a transformed character. Most of us think that, uh, I also used to think that way, that just by singing hymns and having a good choice of songs makes the ministry powerful. But that is extremely wrong. What comes first is the character, having Christ in your hearts. Then when you will sing, people will be converted. And this is a challenge I used to ask uh, uh, choir members of the place I was, that if the choir men and ladies decided to dress in a... Okay, I know this may hurt some of you, but I'm going to say it anyway. If they were to dress consistently in... Uh, a way that glorifies God. How long would it take for the church to be converted by their music? Very short time. If all church leaders had Christ in their hearts, they would dress the same, on Sabbath they would dress the same way as they dress on other days. Their conversations will be the same on Sabbath at the pulpit as on other days. How long would it take for some heart to be converted? I think it will be a very short time. But the re main reason why our music has lost its power is because we concentrate so much on what we sing and we forget about the character. We forget about prayer. Having all those practice sessions and perfecting everything with the wrong character still is not building on the rock. That is, building on the rock involves having the right character, reflecting Christ everywhere you go and when you reflect christ then good singing will be a fruit and not the root so build your house on the rock don't only be concerned about good singing but your concern should be a character that matches the choice of songs that you do uh -huh. so that is it about building on the rock so uh -huh. our first point we said why then the plan the location. Now the foundation. The foundation, as we mentioned, learn the proper technique. Uh, we cannot, we can't cover it entirely now, but strive to learn how to to learn how your body operates and use it to achieve the results. If it's in, on the piano, on the guitar, on the recorder, uh, for especially for singing, uh, most of our choirs, honestly, they normally have the wrong. Uh, technique, most of our choirs, and uh, I used to wonder why. Probably, some times you desire some the okay, you're seeing us to sing in a particular way, and they are enabled. And I used to wonder why. What is what is the problem? Until I discovered this truth that they are lacking on. We are lacking, not they. We. I am also part of them. We are lacking in technique. We are lacking in, on how to use our voices. And at times when you sing for two hours, you feel like your voice, you start talking like, praise God, church, and all that stuff. But then if you had the proper technique, the more you sing, the more your voice opens up. Uh, I, think, I think I've really covered a lot to do with technique. Uh, now, let me add just something small as we head to the next. One way of growing fast, how to achieve much in less time on technique and on other stuff. Now this covers generally. Take note of the minor details. Take note 
of the minor details. Minor details are very, very important. In the book of Matthew, I believe it's chapter 5, verse 17. Uh, let me confirm. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, that talks about no jot or tittle. Yeah, 5, verse 18. Matthew 5, verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle. Now, uh, jot is something very small and tittle is also something very small. God says one jot or tittle shall not pass from my word. In music, people normally ignore the tiny, that tiny detail. And that tiny detail is what makes the difference between God's maestro and a common mere man. Uh, I'll give uh, an example of two guys. I used to watch them so much. They're called Two Set Violin, and they are very, they're professional, professional violinists. And they, by the time I was watching that thing, they had played for let, approximately 24 years. Now, 24 years is a long time. Some of us have not even reached that age. So they went to a certain audition in Curtis School, Curtis Music School, which is one of the best music schools in the world. Now, yeah, I know some of us are wondering, with 24 years of professional violin, you still want to enroll in a school. Okay, but as is the rule of many schools, before you go to school, you do an interview. So they want to play a piece to each. There are two people, so each of them was playing their own piece of their own choice. Okay, now that's that's wonderful. Your own choice. So you're interviewed by. It's like you're setting the exam for yourself. So they choose their pieces, and they went. Did they qualify? They were told no. Our standards for this year were high. You did not qualify. So try again another time. So as they were walking around this building. Uh, they meet a friend and their friend offers, them, okay, this is what will happen. Uh, the friend tells them, uh, I can show you around the school. And of course, you'll, you'll be excited. And they started walking around the school. And as they were entering one of the rooms, they meet their adjudicators. They were two adjudicators. So one takes one, the other one takes the other student and the other professional violinist and they go. And uh, now the adjudicators tell them, okay, now let's let's discuss more on what you played so the first guy starts and he, i can't remember the classical piece he was playing and the adjudicator asks him what is the starting dynamic the other person too is asked what is the starting dynamic now they didn't know the starting dynamic now what is dynamic dynamic is maybe much more concerned with how high or how low things like volume and all that. Okay, but in the account being asked about volume, you've heard of mezzoforte, mezzopiano. Mezzoforte is moderately loud or piano is soft. So at times you can decide when the trumpet is soft or hard, when the trumpet of, and powerfully, that is forte, loud, then piano is soft. Now they didn't know the starting dynamic and Obviously, they knew the meaning of loud and soft. A person who has played professional music for 24 years uh, must know that uh, mesoforte, mesopiano, they are basic things. Uh, so they didn't know. They didn't take into account the minor details. And they lost the chance. So for you to grow fast, take account of the minor details. If there's the tiniest thing that is wrong with your music, change it, don't proceed. Looking at the characters that we looked at, uh, Joseph did not come from nowhere and rise to the level that he reached, but he, he was being trained from, he took uh, minor details seriously, and he that is faithful in little, he will be faithful in much. He was faithful in little, and he was given much. Look at the parable of the talents. Uh, they were faith, the person who was faithful with five, he got even extra uh, from the person who was given one, but 
uh, did not use it. So take account of the minor details. Don't ignore them. Strive for perfection. Matthew 5, 48. Be, be perfect even as our Father in heaven is perfect. Now, secondly, start small. Play what is in your level. If your level is baby Jesus, don't be ashamed. One day you'll get to that advanced stage. But start small. Probably you've been singing for years and your technique is wrong. There's no problem with starting small. Of course, there are responsibilities that you have. You can proceed taking the responsibilities. But if possible, you re uh, if you realize you are doing it the wrong way, there's no problem of starting again. Because uh, this that illustration I used of the bus, if these 50 people carry the bus from Nairobi and they reach like two kilometers and they realize they're doing it wrong, they have two options, either to proceed or to get back. If they get back, then they will move faster later. But if they are, you know the effect. They will spend much energy, much time, and uh, they will also be drained by the end of the job, which was worthless. So start small. Click, do what is in your level. Now, in this part, one of the things that helped me grow was that I knew that there was a time I was not competent enough to play for a congregation. And I knew that, and I desired to play for the congregation. So knowing that I was not able, uh, and I was not allowed, I think those who did not allow, allow me to play for congregational singing before I got to the level of the congregation. With that yearning and that desire to get to that level, I, you see, there's that push. You want to achieve something. You have a short-term goal. It gives you a push to practice more and get to that point, to that uh, competency level. But then what one thing I have seen is that somebody, let's say it's the recorder, you go and learn one song, sweet. Oh, okay. Let me not give examples. Probably somebody did it. But one of the simplest songs is normally sweet or prayer uh, or odd to joy. You learn your first song, the next moment we hear things like, uh, we welcome Mike for a special item. And you only know one song. Like, you can't just be patient to understand more uh, of your instrument before. Uh, I think that is one thing that slows down a person's progress. You learn a very tiny thing and you want to show everybody you are there. It, it will slow down the, your learning process. Or another problem that I've seen, especially with students, is uh -huh. you want to lower the level, let's say congregational singing. You lower the level of the congregational singing to, you want to get it to your level, OK? Who is supposed? Uh, it's you who should rise to their level, not them come down to your level. So you find that some, when somebody is learning the guitar or which other instrument, and the person knows how to play one key. So the person tells you as the pianist of duty, don't play it in any other key, play it in the key I'm comfortable with. So it's like because of one person, an entire congregation of 200 people has to struggle. Probably the congregation is not comfortable with that key, but because you, the pianist, you know how to play one key, they must sing in the single key that you know. Yeah, it may seem fun, but it's just slowing down your progress. You'll feel comfortable that they have load. And it's also lowering the standards of God's music. Before you get to that competency, don't. Just stay away from it. You'll get there one day. It will give you the push that one day I know I'll get to this point. But if you are in a hurry to start uh, getting involved in congregational singing before you are competent, you will live in mediocrity. You will live in, okay, some people may get out of it, but mostly you live in that mediocrity because... Uh, like everybody is accommodating you, so there's nothing pushing you to get to a higher level. So start small. Deal with what is in your level. 
deal with what is in your level. And then another third point, understand. Don't cram. Understand. Understand what you're playing. And if you don't understand what you're playing, then that thing is above your level. Keep away from it. Understand. If you don't understand how you're using your voice or the words that you're singing or how, okay, how uh, your technique works, then that thing is above your level. Just go back. Teremka. And you'll get there one day. And for understanding, uh, let me say that if you can't give three independent examples, uh, then you have not understood it. Let's say you know two times two is equals to four, three times three is nine, and you, you ask, give me an example of multiplication. You can't give two times one. It means you have not understood it. You have just crammed. So understand, don't cram. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 12. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of the of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So what does God count as knowledge? Understanding. The knowledge of the holy is understanding. Understand what you do. Before you place a chord somewhere, ask yourself, why am I putting it here? Like, have an understanding of what you do. It will help you grow. It will help you apply it in other areas. Uh, yeah, so that is much of what will be will be said in how. Take into account the minor details. Don't ignore them. The minor details are extremely important. They make the difference. Uh, what is the difference between a good... Uh, let me say a pianist and... Uh, I'll use a uh, piano because I'm a pianist. I'm a keyboardist, whatever. Uh, sometimes what makes the difference is something really small. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, let me try and give an example. I hope it will be clear. I just hope it will be clear. I want to play a song. When the trumpet of the Lord. Tell me which is better between the two. That's the first one. The second one. Which one will you see as better? Okay, I think that was a bad example. Uh, I'm trying to think of... Okay, that's the first one. The second one... Which one, which one seems better between the two? I hope this, uh, this may be a bad example, but I hope it works. How many say the first one? How many say the second one? How many say no difference? Okay, let me start again. How many say the first one? The first one? Uh, I was I wasn't the first one. I can you can raise your hand so that I see the first one, the first one. Okay, there's one. How many say the second one? Okay, the hands are many. The hands are many. Okay, thank you. I think it's the second one. Uh, from what is the difference? The difference is something very little. The first one I was. Everything was loud. The second one, just the same thing, but some are loud, some are soft. Yeah. What was the difference? Something very little, very little. Okay. Which one would you prefer between these two? Uh, 
Okay, I'm thinking of examples and they still not. That is day by day. Second one. Okay, I'll repeat. First one. Second one. How many go with the first one? How many enjoyed the first one more than the second? You can raise your hands. Okay, quite a number. How many enjoyed the second one more? The second one more? No hand. What was the difference? The difference was the first one was the second one. Very tiny. The difference was the second one. Uh, so, very minor details, they matter. They make the difference in our music. Dynamics. One of the things that is most commonly ignored is dynamics. Dynamics, and it creates a big difference. You just sing a song from the start to the end. Evo to Akuna. Uh, let me open song number 340. Now, here, this is a very good example with that. Song number 340. We have heard a joyful sound, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, spread the gladness all around. Let me use stanza three. Okay, I'm trying to look at the stanza that... Okay, stanza three, stanza three. Sing above the battle strife, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, by his death and endless life. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, sing it softly through the gloom. When the heart for mercy craves, sing it triumph for the tomb. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. That is person one. Person two. Let me give it a look. Sing above the battle strife. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. By his death and endless life. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing it softly through the gloom when the heart of mercy craves. Sing in triumph for the tomb. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Now, how many prefer the first one? Hands raised. How many prefer the second one? Okay, you can see several hands. What was the difference? The first one, I see at a Yopatia singing it softly through the gloom. People are just singing it normally. Like the song itself says, sing it softly, but you're still singing it normally. Dynamics is one part that is normally ignored, along with many others. And we don't know how much this little thing called dynamics can help change our music and transform it. So take account of the minor details, the difference between a maestro, a great musician and a small musician. You may listen to them both and everything seems the same. But then these minor details, you see one minor detail, another one, another one, another, and very many of them, they make the difference. So as you're learning, Hearken diligently to the minor deal. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass that if thou shalt hearken diligently, it does not stop at hearken, diligently. Diligently is taking everything into account. So I'll insist on this point. Take into account the minor details. There are many songs that we have done, uh, even in groups that um, probably I'm involved in, and you just see people ignoring some things. And you can't blame them because the technique does not allow them to get to that point. Uh, like this, this song that was being trained somewhere I was, and it has a very fast part. Ta -da 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 -tan, ta -da 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 -tan. 
people were not able to sing that. So they were singing, ah, ah, ah. I can't remember the lyrics. Uh, let me make my own lyrics. The song of praise, the song of praise, the song of praise. Many people are not able to do song of. So they're saying the song of praise. Another choir will do the right thing. The song of praise. There's a big difference. But then it is something minor. One sings the song of the song of praise. Another the song of praise. So it's important to uh uh what was i saying to take account of the minor details don't uh, ignore them and if there's a minor detail that you're unable to do it means that thing is above your level go down kidogo utafika apo yeah then lastly in the training of all the, these people of moses how many years was moses trained he started leading the children of israel when he was 80 years old after 40 years in the wilderness. Look at Joseph. He had to spend many years in prison. Uh, I know there were more than two years. Because after the chief, was it chief baker or chief butler? One of them, the chief butler was restored. Joseph stayed another two years. He had to be sold to Egypt for him to rise. It was through much tribulation. We have another character, David. He had to take care of flock before he could rise to lead Israel. And it was not uh, a smooth path from his birth. Look at Jacob. Uh, Jacob alipitia mashida nyingi. Yeah? Like, I think even forgetting all other problems, but you can imagine working for seven years for a lady and then the ladies, and then you're given the sister. I think it is, it is so heartbreaking. Uh, and all other troubles he faced, facing his sow, the night of the night when he wrestled God, you know, his hip was dislocated after the night. But amid all this much tribulation, he was prepared for a greater work. Look at a guy like uh, Abraham. You're told separate from your king kindred, separate from these friends that you have made in Ur, and go to the place where God calls you, which you don't even know. You don't even know the place. So it was through much tribulation. So. Why do we expect our training to be easy when the maestros in the Bible, their training was hard? So we need to dedicate our time for that. Um, I'll read the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 4. One of the last verses. We're coming to the end. Don't feel tired. Proverbs, chapter, what did I say? 13, verse 4. I hope, really hope it's the verse. Yeah, it's the verse. The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing. This principle applies also in music. If you are lazy, you will leave desiring. Hey, I can't have to a record, I can't have to a piano, I can't have to a note. But then, if you are not willing to work, the opportunity has come to them. I'm sorry for using this example, but I had one of my roommates who really wanted to learn how to play the keyboard. And he was my roommate. Uh, I played the keyboard. The keyboard was in the house. Like, he had everything. But until now, uh, I think he gave up on the dream. I don't know what happened to him. But the Bible tells us, the slow of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing. But the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. You have to work to get to become uh, God's maestro, a great musician in his ministry. You must work. If all other people worked, it is not by a miracle that you'll rise to these standards. Now, the last part of our discussion, what is the effect of breaking all these things and of not using these procedures and trusting in your own ways? Vain, one of the results of uh, break, vain repetitions. Uh -huh. Vain repetitions, vain repetitions. You will be repeating one thing severally, but you still won't get it because you left one principle. Uh, okay. Third, uh, if you want to sing, let's say complicated music. Let all the hey, 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 Then the trainer comes and tells you, can you repeat what I've done? Let all the hey, 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 hey. You may repeat that even for a whole hour. 
But then, if it's above your level, you'll keep repeating. And but in Zuri Ushike, after two weeks, Ushasa how? So vain repetitions will, if you don't follow the right procedure. Like if a building, if it has the wrong foundation, they try to compensate for it by putting up pillars, which may fail most of the time or may compromise the beauty of the building or all that stuff. So just make a point of learning it right the very first time. Another thing, if you don't have a plan, then you're planning to fail. So you will not get to the extent that you will have. If you ignore those minor details, you don't, you won't grow to become, to get to, uh, okay, assuming Joseph was not faithful with Potiphar's wife, probably God will have forgiven him, but he wouldn't have gotten to that high extent that he got uh, as a result of his faithfulness. And then uh, I said vain repetitions, not getting to the extent you would have, and then forgetting. If you play a piece above your level, you may play it or you may sing it, but then you'll forget it after I've played pieces uh, that were above my level. An example of it was, uh, okay, okay, I won't mention it and I won't play it, but it was, uh, it was lovely to the ear, very lovely, very nice. And I took a very long time just practicing that single piece. And right now, uh, I know if I practice, I'll remember, but I've forgotten. But what about the easier pieces that I started with? I can remember them even till now. Okay, I've not practiced this for years. Not for years. Yeah, for years. I've not practiced it. But I want to try it. I still remember every beat. But I've not practiced it for years. Why? It was within my level. So if you play something above your level, you'll be very inconsistent. You'll forget. And then another thing, since you ignored some principles. Oh, this is another piece. Uh, 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 I knew that I will start playing in wedding. So I went and learned the wedding match. I think you know it. So it goes... So it goes something like that. But in real sense, I have ignored some drills there. Da -da -da -da. Dun, 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 I ignored that because uh, it required me to have these fingers playing and then these last two fingers they do. Now you can try doing, uh, having your last fingers, uh, the first fingers they move relatively easy. So you can achieve something like, but then the last two, it's normally a challenge. If they are, if you've not practiced. So when I was learning it for the first time, my technique was bad. So I ignored that part. If you break these rules, you will ignore those parts. And yes, you may please the mob with your nice play, but you really can't play it at professional level because they know that this place there has to be a tree. I, that thing is called a tree. Uh, that they know this place needs to be a tree, and they know that you are lacking in technique. That is why you can't uh, be able to execute that. So that those are some of the things that Yes, you may have that music sung or played, but then when you ignore these minor details, it makes the difference between a good choir and yours. Uh, I remember now this is uh, another story I can say. One time I was with my choir somewhere. I was still young in music, very young. I was still learning and we went somewhere and presented Hallelujah Chorus. And after that presentation, everybody was like, Amen. Wow, wow. Well, they, and you so you know those cheers. And then after we had sung, we went and sat down. And then now it was time, another choir was invited. And then the choir did the same exact song, Hallelujah Chorus. And there was a big, big difference between how we did it and how they did it. Uh, I've not said difference, but a big difference. Uh, where, I'd sit, where I was seated, I had somebody say, wait, so 
these are some of the things that if you follow the wrong procedures, these are the, you ignore those important parts, then your presentation will be lacking something. And uh, for us, we may, for the class that has not probably done music, they may not see it, but there are those who will realize. And they, when it is done in the right way, everybody will know that our way to Amekwaki, Pika Ikitu, it is not right. Then another disadvantage, frustration. If you don't plan, today you see Mike playing this and you start playing like him. Tomorrow you hear uh, Mike 2 playing a different thing and you play like Mike 2. The next day, Mike 3, you play like Mike 3. So if you don't have a plan, today you're playing this, tomorrow here, tomorrow here, to, today you're in this YouTube video, tomorrow the next. And what happens is that you get frustrated and you learn very little and it, you take a long time to achieve your results. Yeah, so uh, frustration, frustration, that is uh, an effect. Then uh, let me mention the last thing that YouTube is a good place to learn, but for a start, I'd advise you to get, uh, if you can, if you can get an expert to guide you. In YouTube, me who has played for like seven years will go there looking for tutorials. Another person who has played for 30 years will go to the same YouTube looking for tutorials. Me, another person who is a beginner goes to YouTube and all this content will be, uh, you will be exposed to all this content and you'll end up discouraged. Uh, sometimes I look at YouTube and I see some videos termed as a beginner and I'm like, this is not beginner at all. This thing needs needs an advanced player to play it. And somebody just goes there and captions it beginner. And you meet a beginner really struggling and you know, my, this, I can't even play this with my seven years and somebody has written it beginner. So you struggle learning things that are not necessary for your level. So if you can get somebody to guide you for the start. And if you can't just know the process that you need to follow, then as you go to YouTube or searching for videos, you know I'm searching for videos on this and this, and you shun away all other things. Yeah. So I'll end it at that. And just to give a summary of the entire content, I'll read the book of Proverbs chapter three. Now this is the last thing and we'll be done. Proverbs chapter three. Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, I came to love the book of Proverbs. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. It, those are powerful words by God. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. If you want length of days also in your music journey, long life and peace, then follow the commandments of God. Then uh, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Some of us believe that if you follow the right principles, you'll only find favor in the sight of God and not man. But God tells us if you do according to his will, you'll find favor in the sight of God and man. Then goes, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Important words, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge God. Have your foundation on God. And you said uh, the location of the rock is character. Uh, where was I? Verse 6. Uh, in all thy ways, acknowledge the Lord, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart for evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. What will happen if you honor the Lord with your music? So shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be wary of his correction. I was corrected many times in my growth as a pianist. I used to, at first, my fingers, I used to play flat, 
then I'm told do this, stop moving your risk. The corrections were too much uh, when I was learning my technique. But then, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be wary of his correction. Why? For whom the Lord loveth, he corrected, even as a father, the son in whom he delighted. If you meet somebody you don't love, you not correct him. We are chafanya mabayake. Then it proceeds and says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. Where do we find wisdom? In the word of God. Understanding is the basic role in getting uh, to. The knowledge of the holy is understanding, as we had read. Then uh, verse 14. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. Then verse 15, what does it say? Okay. Yes, I'll refer to my Bible. Uh, Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 15. She is more the precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire not to be compared unto her. All the things you can desire, all the things, the Bible says, all the things you can desire not to be compared to wisdom and understanding. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Then I'll skip some verses because of time, and I'll go to verse 31. Verse 31. Strive not with a man without cause if he have done thee no harm. In music, we are not here to compete or to strive with each other, but uh, we are here to glorify God. He is our marking scheme. Envy thou not the oppressor, envy not your neighbor, and choose none of his ways. Even if the person, the other person grow, is growing to whatever extent, envy thou not and choose none of his ways, but choose God's ways. For the fraud is abomination unto the Lord, but his secret is with the rushes. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked, but he blessed the habitation of the just. Now, I'll finish with the verse that faith. Let me skip that for. The wise shall inherit glory. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. Fools are promoted, and they're promoted to shame. Yeah, so I hope we have learned something from the discussion that we have had. And I hope we'll apply these principles in yearning and learning to become God's maestro. So I'll open the floor for questions or comments. I'm opening the floor for questions or comments. Or if there's a part you didn't understand, uh, so that I may explain. Uh, maybe you can just give uh, a summary of how someone can know if they are doing the wrong technique and how to acquire the right one. Just tips. Okay, how to acquire the right technique and how somebody can know they're using the wrong technique. Okay, so technique varies from uh, voice to, okay, voice and then voice, uh, and then instruments, each instrument has its own technique. Uh, so one way of learning, uh, I may not cover all of them because I don't know all of them, I may know only of those I have been involved in. Uh, in instrument, uh, get a professional who knows, the, get a professional and they will assist in uh, getting the right technique. In voice also, get a professional or uh, I can recommend for us to read the book, The Voice in Speech and Song by Ellen G. White. There is uh, a part, is it a part or a chapter called Voice Culture? And apparently the spirit of prophecy gives us all things. It gives the vocal tech, right vocal technique. Vo the book is The Voice in Speech and Song and chapter. It's, uh, I don't know whether it's chapter or part, but it's, kama ni chapter, ikona very many parts, ama kama ni part, ikona many chapters under it. Voice culture, 
you look at it voice culture and then uh since it is not determined akuna a specific determination of it uh, one way of knowing that you have the wrong te- if you want to technique is natural so if you do anything and it's not natural then wrong technique if you do anything and it seems not natural wrong technique if somebody tells you to sing ukifanya hivi it is not natural for the neck to look up it is natural for the neck to be at this point so that is the right technique is the natural way of doing things find out the natural way if it's not natural it is a uh, wrong technique another way of knowing that you have the whether you have the right technique or the wrong technique is injury uh injury after a long period of time if after you sing for a long time you get a headache something common or your voice disappears then you have the wrong technique right technique means the more you sing the more your voice grows so it has to be natural and then number two uh, no no what no what uh, what do we call it no injuries should come with it if it's playing an instrument then uh no the the hands the fingers should not be should not uh after playing you should feel some pain here or such stuff <laughs> then another thing good technique can allow you to it gives you length length or you don't get tired easily when you have the right technique you don't get tired easily if it's the wrong technique your voice gets tired easily your hands get tired easily but what should get tired is maybe the brain because of singing for two hours it's tiresome to the brain right yeah so maybe the brain gets tired but physically the right technique you shouldn't get tired but then technique is a very wide wide area and uh, okay i don't know uh it depends on individual to individual but okay personally i would give myself one year to master the right technique because it comes from repetition and also most of the time we find that which is based on unlearning what we had already learned and unlearning is very hard if you are used to holding your pen like this and somebody tells you to start holding it like this obvious time from time uh you'll find yourself back to your original uh position so uh okay for me what i'm doing with my piano i stopped practicing how to play and i'm only concerned about how my fingers are moving right now for some months for some months now so i'd give it a long time uh and i have the hope that i'll get there because moses was trained for 8 years and he got there so i'll give myself i may give myself one year then get a professional as i had mentioned or if you can't get a professional uh the little things that you see other people do they can be of great help but above all it should be natural no injury and you shouldn't get tired that is it about technique but it's wide it's extremely wide yeah i will give myself one year to master a right technique in whatever i will i'm doing so for those who are beginners master technique first if you are playing songs probably technique and the more you play the more you make your unlearning process difficult so i will advise do away with what you're playing just work on technique and when you start playing your fingers will just be moving your tongue and your breath all that stuff will just comfortably flow you know what to do at what point yeah so it's wide it's wide and i'm still learning that is one of my objectives this year and probably when i get the right way of singing the right way of playing i'll be willing to share it with those who may intend to learn yeah but for i recommend that book the voice in speech and song uh the part i've seen it has been posted in the messages yeah somebody can check it vss for 14.1 yeah okay any other question or comment
any other question or comment? Okay, I can see there's none. So before I pray, allow me read these two quotes, which I'll share. Yeah, here it is. Uh-huh. All right. Okay, it says, uh, there are few who realize the influence of the little things of life upon the development of character. It's from PP to 23.3. There are few who realize the influence of the little things of life upon the development of character. What develops character? The little things. Nothing with which we have to do is really small. The varied circumstances that we meet day by day are designed to test our faithfulness and to qualify us for greater trust. Now, these are very noble words. I hope you are thinking on them as we read. By adherence to principle in the transactions of ordinary life, the mind becomes accustomed to hold the claims of duty above those of pleasure and inclination. Minds thus disciplined are not wavering between right and wrong. Like the reed trembling in the wind, they are loyal to duty because they have trained themselves to habits of fidelity and truth. There are few who realize the influence, the first part of little things upon their development of character. Okay, it's not complete. There is this part I wanted. Okay, let me. Uh, okay, it seems I've lost. Oh, yeah. It's. Yeah, I've gotten it, so let me share. Oh, okay, that's not it. Uh, just, uh, yeah. Okay, let me close that. Okay, the formation of a noble character is the work of a lifetime. It must be the result of diligent and persevering effort. I repeat, the formation of a noble character is the work of a lifetime and must be the result of diligent and persevering effort. God gives opportunities. Success depends upon the use made of them. God gives opportunities. Success depends upon the use made of them. Then lastly, uh, the last quote that I'm reading, let me share. Man would have dispensed with that long period of toil and obscurity, deeming it a great loss of time. Now, that is the story of Moses uh, when he spent 40 years tending for flock to be prepared to lead Israel out of, the pro out of Egypt to the promised land. And it says man would have dispensed with that long period of time of toil and obscurity, deeming it a great loss of time, but infinite wisdom called him who was to become the leader of his people to spend how many years? 40 years in the humble work of a shepherd. The habits of caretaking, of self-forgetfulness and tender solicitude for his flock thus developed to prepare him to become the compassionate, long-suffering shepherd of Israel. Then ends that, 
no advantage that human training or culture could bestow could be a substitute for this experience. No advantage that human training could bestow could be a substitute for this experience. Which ex experience? The long period of toil and obscurity. Yes, yeah, so we should not uh, see it as something that will just come uh, very soon. You are a beginner today and tomorrow you are God's maestro. God, take his things take time. And that is where I'll finish with our key text, which was James chapter 1, verse 4, which says, But let patience have her perfect work. Patience results to perfect work. But let patience have a perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Let patience have a perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. The patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. The patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. And then, blessed, uh, the end of a thing is better than the beginning thereof. So let's have this hope of growing to be God's maestro. Of course, it is not easy, but by God's grace, we'll get there and we'll enjoy the results. Hope you have been blessed. Okay, so I'll pray to end the session. Then probably after we are done with everything, we can remain with those who are interested in taking the recorder classes. Is it purely recorder, recorder pekeake, not voice, not piano. The recorder online classes, so we can remain with them to discuss on what we'll do next. But I can pray then Google ends the meeting and we remain with them so that we conclude this whole matter today. Yeah. So let's pray. Our Father, what in heaven, we come before you this time. We thank you for this Father that you have led us, for the message that you have shared with your children this day. Heavenly Master, I pray that may these lessons abide in our hearts and may they be of benefit to us and to all those uh, who will be blessed by our ministry in thy service. Holy, holy, uh, holy be your name. May it be hallowed through our song, through our character, through our deportment. May we be like Christ all by, uh, may you enable us achieve this. I pray this believing and trusting in Jesus' name.